Hello, it's spring break time. Currently this week, our kids do not have school, but we did have our March school board meeting. First of all, under consent agenda, we had bills totaling $23,278,893.38. Now that is more than what we would typically see each month, but there's a reason for that. Uh, we do pay bond and principal interest payments twice a year. So we did that in February and that totaled up to approximately $11.7 million. Under superintendent's report, there was a number of things that I talked about. First of all, I discussed our MSIP 6 performance, and the independent school district got a score of 70.16. Now, that was lower than what we were hoping for, but this was not unexpected. We did make a transition in Missouri from MSIP 5 to MSIP 6. So what that means is we had completely new tests, as well as different cut scores, also probably contributing more than anything else to the lowering of scores throughout the state was the fact that the way in which we were scored was completely different. And to make an example of this, in 2018, when we had MSIP 5, there were 320 schools that scored a 95% or better on MSIP 5 scoring rubric. The Independent School District was one of those at 97.5%. So again, 320 school districts in 2018 at 95% or better. Now, jump forward to MSIP 6 and the most recent scores, only four school districts scored 95% or better. So it is completely different as far as the scoring and the test. Uh, in addition to that, we did transition to a new ELA and math program here in the Independent School District. So while we were not uh, as excited about the scores as we have been in the past. It was not unexpected and we also understand the great work that's going on with all of our teachers and we do expect that throughout MSIP 6 the, for the years to come that our scores will continue to improve. Also, I did talk about our assessed valuation in the school district. Our AV last year was $1,272,981,352. Our preliminary AV for this upcoming school year will be $1,560,230,880. Now, that most recent number that I gave, our preliminary AV, does not include any new construction and also the personal property within the school district has not been finalized yet as well. So, while our AV did go up considerably, also understand that within Missouri, we have what's called the Hancock Amendment. And what the Hancock Amendment says is that for a school district, if your assessed valuation goes up, a school district has to roll its levy back so that the revenue we receive is no more or no greater than the consumer price index. So with our AV going up, we will have to roll our tax levy back. And then lastly, what I did talk about was legislation. While the bill has not been finalized, House Bill 253 did pass, have its third reading through the House, and this is the open enrollment bill. Uh, this is a bill that we are following closely, and it's one that we do not support. And there's a number of reasons for that. First of all, this will open up borders, all of the school district borders, for students to change and go from one school district to another. Now, you would have to have permission from one district that they would allow for open enrollment. But here's what this does do in the state of Missouri. And I will take the independent school district as an example of this. A couple of years ago, we did pass a bond issue, and for the first time in many decades, we were able to eliminate all mobile trailers within the ISD, as our enrollment has been increasing throughout the years. So if you do have open enrollment where school districts are now receiving students, then we have local taxpayer dollars that paid for bonds to, in our case, get rid of mobile trailers and add on to our schools or build schools. Now we could also then start to have instances where we have uh, not enough room for our own students that already live here within the ISD boundaries. So that's just a short synopsis of why we are not in favor of open enrollment, which is House Bill 253. 
Under new business, first of all, we did have a presentation on Career Ladder by Dr. Robinson in the Human Resources Department, which led into item number two, which was the approval of the Career Ladder Plan for the 2023-2024 school year. And these, this is for stages one, two, and three. Now, career ladder is something that you may have not have heard that term for a number of years, and that's because uh, more than a decade ago, uh, the state of Missouri and DESE did away with the career ladder program. Uh, the legislature did institute funding for this, so we do plan on bringing career ladder back here in the independent school district. And I'm very excited for that. That does allow our certificated staff, our teachers, to find avenues in which to make more money by performing different tasks or duties here within the school district. Item number three was the approval of the mobile communication agreement. Currently, we use AT&T within the Independent School District for our mobile phone services. Uh, we did bid this out and we are going to go with Verizon. Uh, as well as saving money using Verizon, we also uh, did experience much better coverage whenever we did our testing uh, throughout the bid process. Item number four is the approval to purchase replacement laptops for elementary teachers. Uh, the winning bidder for this was CDWG through the Ed Plus contract, and this totaled $491,530. We do have a replacement cycle for our technology here in the ISD, so these laptop computers will replace the laptops for teachers at 10 of our elementary schools. Next year, we will replace the laptops at the next 10 elementary schools. Item number five was the approval to purchase computers and Chromebooks. The winning bidder on this again was CDWG through the Ed Plus contract and this totaled $445,257.60. Uh, with this bid, there were 142 laptops. Uh, these will be used for our new teachers as they come into the school district, as well as some extras if we do have some breakage. Also, we do have 104 all-in-one computers. Uh, these all-in-one machines is what our custodians use to time in or time out uh, on the job, as well as we use them for library checkouts and our business labs. We do also have 78 desktops and 78 monitors. Uh, these will go into our high schools at our AutoCAD and our video editing labs. And then we have 160 Chromebooks as part of this bid. And of those, about 80 are going to be used for our timekeeping systems here within the school district. And the other 80 will go on to Chromebook card. Item number six was the approval to purchase USB-C Chromebook power supplies. On this, the winning bidder was for $95,325 through the TIPS contract. These are power cords for our Chromebook carts here in the school district. Item number seven was the approval to accept the bid for the renovation at Three Trails Elementary School. This is part of our bond issue work. Uh, this is for $1,194,000 and the winning bidder was CB Construction Services LLC. And with this work, we will remodel the cafeteria. Uh, part of the cafeteria is a bump out currently, which is the library. So we will uh, demo the existing library, be able to expand the lunchroom, and then we will also have some uh, light remodeling and what uh, space is currently used as a classroom will now become the library. And then also we will do some remodeling of the gym and then we will add the secured vestibule there at the front entrance of three trails. Item number eight under new business was the approval to accept the agreement for control access and life safety devices for district buildings. These are things like our cameras, our security system, the monitoring we have, the panic devices, even our key card access and our fire and elevator alarm system. So this is all part of this bid and ACS control services is the provider for this. This is a five-year contract at $471,572.40 annually.
Item number nine was the approval to amend the contract for the Bingham Middle School HVAC replacement project. This totals $503,563. About a year ago, the Board of Education did approve the installation for this at $588,117. And that was just for the installation, not um, all of the equipment. Uh, we did know that whenever we put this out, after we got the specs back, that the units are energy efficient, but they're also heavier. So we were going to have to do some engineering work. So this change order is for all of the engineering work, the additional steel that has to go up on the roof of Bingham Middle School to support those systems. Item number 10 is the approval to accept the bid for the repair of playground surfaces for district buildings. And this is actually at Sugar Creek Elementary School. Uh, this will be some preventative maintenance on the area. Uh, it totals $27,540.10 from Precision Construction Company. Item number 11 was the approval to accept the bid for restroom partitions for district buildings. Uh, this is just for the materials as our staff installs the restroom partitions. It totaled $99,394.50 from Hilliard, and this is part of Project Shine as we look to beautify our buildings. Item 12 was the approval to accept the bid for carpet, stair tread, cove base, rubber tile landings, uh, water hog floor tile, VCT, and LVT for our buildings. Uh, much like the last item, this is part of Project Shine. This totals $362,155 from Regents Flooring. Uh, item number 13, again still part of Project Shine, is the approval to accept a bid for epoxy floor finishing for district buildings. Uh, the winning bidder was Unifloor at $281,134. Item number 14 was the approval for the declaration of surplus items. Whenever we have items within the school district that we're going to dispose of, there's a way in which that we have to do this. So we bring a list forward for the Board of Education to approve, and we typically do this four times a year. The last item under new business was the request to have legal counsel at closed session through June 30th, 2023. Typically what we do here in the Independent School District for legal services in closed session is if either administration or a board member makes a request that is done on a month to month basis based upon the request. Uh, there was the request to have counsel at each board meeting closed session. Uh, this was defeated during the open session. So we will continue to use our practices of having legal counsel up on request only rather than have them at each closed session. So with that, that is your March board meeting. We did have a lot of items to get through this month. Uh, we are also, as I said earlier, on spring break. I hope everyone's having a wonderful time enjoying March Madness. This is one of my favorite times of the year. So again, to everyone, thank you for what you do for our kids, for our community, and have a great March.